My name is Felix Kremer. I'm a PhD student in remote sensing at the University of Jena and the German Aerospace Center for Data Science. And today I'm going to talk about the Earth System Data Lab and how we use it to handle large geospatial data. Why am I using the ESDL.jl package? I use it to use data which is larger than RAM. I can describe my algorithms with named axes. So I don't have to think about on which uh, position which axis is. And I can easily parallelize all of these computations on multiple cores and multiple nodes. To use this package, you can use the package manager and install it via the GitHub link. And then we have to load it. So how does the ESDL.jl package use data which is larger than RAM? In the background, it uses the disk arrays package, which implements a array interface for data which lays on the disk. And at the moment, the data is stored either in SAR or net CDF formats. And in these two data formats, we can chunk the data according to our use case. So if we want to use the data, we can load it while the cube function and we will get back a cube with a longitude, a latitude, a time axis and a variable axis. But you could also get other data cube formats with other axes um, depending on your use case. And then we can also subset this via the subset cube function, um, which takes as input your data cube and then uh, keyword arguments according to the name of your axis. So here we set the time axis to a time frame of two years. And then we get back a smaller data cube where we trunk this time axis. And you could also combine these axes to get even smaller data cubes. Now, if we want to use our algorithms, we can use these named axes to describe it. So we can define functions which get an, the output of our function and then the some input according to some axis and then other parameters. And then we can do stuff in there. And then we can, at in this example, we compute the difference between the 95th and the 1st percentile and then we just overwrite this output variable with our actual results and so we want to apply this user-defined function on our axis for this we use the map cube function which takes in the function we just defined our data cube this is the threshold parameter which will be given to the p range function and then we have to define on which axis this function applies and here we say okay our input is a time is the time axis and our output is empty so we get back a data cube which has the same longitude latitude and variable axis but the time axis vanishes because our input is the time and our output is empty. But we could also combine multiple cubes with this. For example, we could use the lump scargill periodogram to compute a periodogram over a irregular time series. And to do this, we have to also input the time axis. So here we get an, the output, the input from the cube and our time axis then we combine these to the lump scargill periodogram and then we return certain um, statistics of the lump scargill periodogram and to do this we have to define the input dimension which is also again the time and then we can define the output dimension which is just the categorical axis which takes the na is named Lomskagel 
and it has um, three parameters which are defining the outputs. And so we have here in the map cube function now two again we have to include the function we just we defined but here we have two input cubes one is the data cube and one is the time axis and then we have to define okay on both of these input cubes we use the time axis as input and then we get an output of the um, Skage categorical axis um, so if we want to parallelize this on multiple cores and multiple nodes, we can just use the distributed function or also the cluster managers to add processes. Here we added three processes and then we have to make sure that all of the functions we want to apply are available everywhere. And then if we apply this, we see that we get a result in 40 seconds compared to the 105 seconds uh, in the serial case. And it's very nice that you, as a user you don't have to do anything else, it's just done in the background. Um, in the future we're currently working on a ArchGDAL branch where we use the disk array to load GDAL datasets so that we can use this also in the ESDL. And um, I would also wa want to look into how to use the GPUs to enable computations. Um, if you want to try it out, you can reach us at the ESDL repository and leave comments or issues there. Or you can have a look at the Earth System Data Lab website, which is the um, overlying ESA um, project which enabled all of this and this was mainly developed at the Max Planck Institute for Biogeochemistry also in Vienna. And if you want to learn more about the data cubes, there's a paper available where these data cubes and how you apply these about along axis is uh, further um, explained. And if you want to learn more about the remote sensing use cases, I'm currently working on a paper which combines the ESDL to um, use the recurrence analysis package from Julia Dynamics.